What's up guys? Glad you're back with me in our study on the attributes of God. It's a pleasure going through these attributes and growing in knowledge of God and love for Him myself as we've been studying these attributes. So if you're visiting the first time, man, I'm Paul and this is Pauline Theology. And today we're going to continue our study on the attributes of God with the attribute of immutability. Now the word immutable comes from the Latin word mature, which means to change. And when you prefix the I'm or M, which means no or none, then we get the word immutable or what is unchangeable. Now a big question I often hear is, don't we read in the Bible that God got angry or was sad or was joyful? Isn't that a change? And yes, we do read that. So I wanna talk about that as well as I wanna see what it's meant when we do say God is immutable or unchangeable. When we talk about God as unchangeable, we are talking about his being, his attributes, his purposes, and his promises. And when the Bible speaks about his unchangeableness, it is always referring to his attributes, his purposes, and his promises. In Malachi, God declares, I, the Lord, do not change. When God's saying this, he's talking about who he is and what he desires for his people. That doesn't change. He asked the people of Israel to come back to him, but they must realize or recognize that he is still holy, righteous, and just. Because he is always loving and gracious, he desires for them to return. He says he will return to them. So we must remember that God is like the sun in relation to the planets. The sun is at a fixed point which shines its rays in the same way all the time. However, the earth feels the harshness of the cold because the earth has moved away from the sun's warming rays. Not because the sun has changed, but because the earth has changed in its relation to the sun. In the same way, God has not changed, but man has changed in his relation to him. The psalmist declares, they will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing you will change them and they will be discarded, but you remain the same and your years will never end. God remains the same throughout the years and for all eternity. If we think about this logically, if God changed, then this would not be a God that we would want to serve. And this is because change entails two things. It's either quantitative or qualitative. Now quantitative is a change that would be getting better or getting worse. So if God were to get worse in any respect, he would no longer be God. And if God were to get better in some respect, then he would, know, he would have never been God in the first place. And the second type of change is qualitative change. And this I think would be understood more as changing his mind or decisions on how he would do something. Now if he did this, it would mean that some part of his character or characteristics has changed and this cannot be either. This would make God untrustworthy. But God is truth, another one of his attributes, which we'll discuss. And scripture says God is not a man that he should lie nor son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? I think that that's what the scripture points to is the consistency of God. As a matter of fact, this is what other theologians actually call God's immutability. They call it his consistency. And it's called this way because God is completely and utterly reliable. God always acts in the same way at all times. And this should be the heartbeat of our understanding of this attribute. This attribute is important for us to take a hold of and know because it teaches us of the trustworthiness of God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we know this because of his attribute of immutability, that he will consistently forgive us of our sins. His attitude towards forgiveness and righteousness will always be the same. Now we know that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved because he never changes. If, if we call upon God, you will be saved because God said it and he will do it. This is what it means to be unchanging in his attributes. And because his attributes are unchanging, then his purposes are unchanging. It's They don't really need to be changed because his attribute of knowledge and wisdom are perfect. So his plans never need to change. And his promises are unchanging because of the attribute of his truth. He never lies. 
as well as the attribute of his omnipotence. He has the power to carry out all the promises that he's promised. Now we discussed this earlier about God changing his mind, but, but I want to use an example from scripture. And this is one that Wayne Grudem uses. In Jonah, scripture says, when God saw their deeds, that they turned from their wicked ways, then God relented or repented concerning the calamity which he had declared he would bring upon them. So when we look, we see that like this example of the son earlier, God acted according to his nature, his attributes. When man's position was in sin, judgment was upon them. However, when man aligned himself into God's goodness through repentance, blessing was on them. It was man's position that changed, not God's. However, what about when, when scripture says God regretted that he had made man or that, that God regretted that he had made Saul king? Well, first off, we should see this as actual sorrow and grief and sadness over the sin of man. God cares deeply and he loves deeply. But we should also remember that these are or anthropomorphisms or anthropopathisms. And what this means is, is that when writing in scripture, we're describing God's actions and feelings in human terms or perspectives. Further, we should not think that the means by which God's eternal purpose is carried out was not through this way in the first place. So I want to encourage you to remember that God's immutability, because it was should be firmly planted on that, it should assure us of our salvation. It should be the bedrock in knowing that God will come again. As a matter of fact, Bob Inc., a reformed theologian, said that God is often called the rock in scripture because of his consistency, his unchangeable nature. This is why we stand on his promises, because he doesn't change. I hope that you've learned a little bit more about the mutability of God. And I hope that it allows you to trust in him more. I pray that this study brings a deeper affection for God and a love for who he is. Now, if you guys got any questions or comments, man, I would love to hear them and I would love to answer them. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video as we continue our study into the heart of God through his attributes.